we bought a $500 Boxster and are turning it into a 1960s inspired vintage supercar. So far, we've replaced the drivetrain, stripped the body off of it, extended the wheelbase, and now we're working on building the body. This week, we're going to continue building the nose of the car so they can begin to look like our vision of a supercar. All that and more mm. in this week's episode of Project Jigsaw. Last week, we built the framework for our all aluminum front end. We put it on the car and realized it's a good bit wider than the wheels and tires that we feel were already optimized for width and performance. But in this shop, we like to build wide cars. So to see how wide we could go and still have it perform well, we're gonna go back to a previous build that's really wide. Deep within the bowels of our storage building, behind a slew of customer cars, Tony's forgotten projects, and piles upon piles of Porsche parts, a beast sleeps. Back in the 90s, Porsche had the yin to the Boxster's yang. The first water-cooled Porsche 911, also known as the 996. A tribute to the 935 slant nose and some other Porsches like the GT1, this is our 996 slant nose. All four corners of this car were hand-shaped in steel, from its custom fixie wheels, to its iconic hips, and to its polarizing livery. This is the car that kickstarted the Crucible Coachworks channel. But underneath it is a GT3 suspension and the real reason that we're bringing it into the shop. We compared a stock Boxster to the wheels and tires that we had on here with our spacers, and we were already 60 millimeters wider. And then we measured the fender lip on the slant nose and compared that to the fender lip on our new clamshell. The new clamshell is a total of 30 millimeters wider, which is only 15 millimeters more than this. And that works really well for us because we want a little extra clearance between the tire and the fender to get that 1960s vibe. What do you think that's for, Amos? I'm not sure, but 345, they're pretty wide. 345, 35, 15s. Oh, yes, I didn't even see that. Yeah. 15s, they're you, excessively <laughs> wide. What do you think they're for, Amos? Guess. I feel like this is a trick question. It's not a trick question, just guess. Uh, Lamborghini. <laughs> Yeah, Perfect. Lamborghini what? <laughs> Lamborghini what? My, I, if I'm guessing right, probably the Countach that comes from Yes. Yep, yep, there it is. There it is. <laughs> the delivery driver's like, wait, that's one tire? <laughs> <laughs> also, how much are these tires a piece? They were almost $1,200 a piece. Yeah, yep. that's a lot of money for, for tires. For a 15-inch tire. <laughs> Banana for scale. Now, before we do any work on the front clamshell, I'm going to move out of the way because we need to get the chassis ready to accept it. Last week, we realized when we were trying to set it on here, which we already kind of knew in the first place, the radiator's in the way, the front cowl and wipers are in the way, and also the rockers need to be cut back to fit our new design. So we're gonna go ahead and strip this thing down so we can get down to business to defeat the Huns. Yeah, as long I would try to try and get it flush with, like you said, where that vent is. Yeah, I mean, maybe slightly more. I am Ryan, totaler of cars. If you don't total the car, are you really modifying it? 
So we got our tubing sitting on the chassis finally, now that we cut back the rockers, got the cowl off, the wipers off, the radiators off, and we've got a problem. We ran into the windshield? Yeah. Yeah. Which you already yeah. knew about the problem. Yeah, yeah, we knew that was there. So now we've got to cut this out so that we can get this down where it needs to be. Yeah, because right now it's just floating like an inch or two higher oh. than it should. We're, yep. we're debating on whether or not it's an inch or two inches or three inches, which is why we got to cut it. Yep. I was thinking if we just move this back to there, and, and it's relatively consistent all the way across, then this should work pretty well. Yep. I still think it's extra work for safety and blah safety, but yeah, I know. whatever, it's fine. We can waste more time. Right. That's much better. It actually sits down yeah. a little bit lower and doesn't look terrible because we reinforced it like you wanted to. So I guess that's, that's a plus side I can agree on. A lot less janky. Yeah. yeah, less jank. Now we need to figure out at what height this needs to sit at because it sits in center line with that axle. So we're pretty close as it is right now. But the height is what matters because that's going to determine and I think we're a close because I mean, if you look just at the valley here, I mean, it's yeah. coming right into the bottom of the glass. I don't think we want to go any lower than that. I agree. I think we're at the point right now where we need to just kind of do it by vision of what looks good on the car because we don't have the data we need to make it like 100% laser perfect. Yeah, it's just all the scans. Yep. yep. Our, Probably um, because our scanner is just a budget scanner. <laughs> our significant digits. We are, yeah, we are trying to work beyond our significant digits. Significant digits. I never heard that before. I didn't really pay attention to math class, so. But I mean, a car math is easier. A mathematician's going to tell me how that doesn't exactly apply here, but you know what I mean. I think we cut out just enough. <laughs> also worth noting, you'll note that the uh, wiper mounts, the, the motor little nipples here, are kind of like intrusive yep. to our design. We're going to ignore this for now. We're, we're going to deal with this later. <laughs> That's a future, it's a future us problem. Yeah, screw that guy. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna 3D print, well, four jigs, but two of them of each. One of them is gonna go and bolt right here, and it's gonna have a little trough for this tube to sit on, and we can be able to shim it up and down. And then the other one's gonna bolt on the hood point, probably this one here, and go in and up and have a trough for the tubing. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense when I'm explaining it on the camera, but it'll make more sense when I make it. Once you see it. And then we can put this back and it'll be in the same spot every time we put it on and take it off. Yeah, that, that, that's the overall goal because it's very important that we keep everything repeatable and accurate. That should do it. I'm making sure to have seven wall layers so I can carve the angle of the tubing into it by hand by sanding it. Because I don't really know what the angle is. My angle finder is dead right now. <laughs> it's only like seven degrees, so that should be plenty of material to shave back if I even need to, because I oversized the trough just a little bit. Now, while uh, these print, I'll just go work on something else. the front mounted and it's squared off and I had the idea to use zip ties on the inner edge here so one on this side one on that side so the weight of gravity basically will push it down and then these will keep sliding side to side like I literally can't 
budget side to side now. But at least now I know it's squared and centered in the front, so on to the back. You notice it's like half as tall as it should be in the end. Uh, that's why I shimmed it up so high. It's because I took the vertical measurement from that one in my notes and made it in that one. So that's my mistake right there. No big deal though, I was able to shim it up. I might end up reprinting it with the uh, correct thickness, but that's a problem for later. There we go. I couldn't sleep last night knowing that it was incorrect and shimmed up really high. Yeah, well, hopefully you can sleep tonight. I'll see if my daughter says anything about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our body is really starting to take shape, but it stops right here. We want to continue building our nose, but what we can see here is our body's going to run into this flange. The flange was not included in the model, which is why it's giving us a problem now. So we're going to cut some of this out of the way so we can move forward with making the nose. We just bought 20 pounds of TIG filler rod because we need to build the nose of this car. Now we have it made in clay up in the model upstairs and it's a good reference to go off of for like the design direction. However, it does not have the details that we need for the actual physical build. So we have two main goals in mind right now. We're going to use our wire here to make a wire form, which you've seen me do many times on this channel and on other platforms. So we're gonna make a wire form of this corner right here. And it's gonna like clip to the nose of the clamshell. That's gonna let us kind of figure out exactly how the rest of it lays around the chassis. And also we're gonna be able to pull templates off that to begin shaping aluminum. Shaping aluminum, that's what we're after. That's what we're after, we wanna to get to that point. Then obviously we need to still do the tubing for the front, like the actual aluminum tubing first before we skin it. But this, will get us significantly closer to doing that. So we have eighth inch rod and 16th inch rod here. The eighth is obviously going to be significantly more rigid. I mean, there's like barely any sag to it. Whereas the 16th inch, if I hold it out, it drops. This would be nice to bend too because it actually could do it by hand very, very easily. <laughs> get that thumb out of here. <laughs> this way straight out it's about right there very precise anytime you use the word about it denotes precision mm -hmm. we're uh transcribing our split like our slice lines for our profiles so we can measure off the clay model directly for our nose piece and they're thinking you have all that data on the computer why not just use the computer sometimes it's nice to just walk over here with a ruler measure it and then walk back over. Blend of old and new. Yeah, modern and Tony technology. So now we have our two slices here for <clears> measurement. <throat> um, for the nose, I can measure dead center to the tip of the nose here, which is about 105 millimeters. Since this model is one sixth scale, just multiply it times six, so one and five times six, Tony? Uh, 630. So then now I'm gonna take a rod that's 630 long. I follow the arc of the top here. I'll give it a little bit of a bend, but that's where the nose is gonna be then, in scale for our model. Isn't that neat? That's awesome. Let's uh, give this thing a slight radius and weld it on.
So Ryan printed a full size version of our little bug eye lights there that mimics the 993 lens shape uh, because we're thinking these are the lights that we want to use. Well, not these exact lights, but yes, we want to use 993 lights in this application. Now on the model, if you look at it, it sits in a plane about like this right now. And of course that's approximate, but that will have us aiming at the ceiling or into the sky. If you're on the road, we need to be more like that. We've got a couple of ideas of how we're going to deal with that. One would be to um, change the angle of everything inside here so that it, it would project through at a level angle when this is at our new angle. The rake that we have on the car. The rake that we have there, yes. I think what we're going to end up doing is something similar to what the Miura had, which was a little bit of a pop-up. So unlike most pop-ups that you see, it's not going to have to come up a lot. So it should help keep it from looking really wonky and awkward when the lights are up. Um, it will still look better down, I believe, but I like that idea because it fits into the vintage of the car that we're trying to build and pop-ups are just really cool. Prove me wrong. Yeah, I 3D printed this because it's a lot lighter than the glass 993 lens. So and a lot can... less expensive. Yeah, that too. Um, so this can be floated where it needs to be when we, uh, in full scale, mind you, when we finish this wireframe. Ryan. Huh. How many people do you think weld welding rods together? A small demographic of welders, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do to get the length you need to... Uh, to make welding rod do something that yeah. it wasn't intended to be art to be used for. Yeah. It's art, Tony. At this point in the video, you might be wondering why we're doing wire form instead of doing the uh, plasma cut templates and bending tubing. Well, there's many reasons for that, but one of them is the nose is gonna be so intricate, there's not really one 2D plane that works to make profiles off of. We could probably force something, but it would end up not being used in the actual final product because like these tubes that are aluminum are staying on the car and they're getting skinned. Whereas the front, if we did that, it probably wouldn't stay in a 2D plane because like, like this bend for here, for example, it goes down, goes this way, it's gonna have a step in it probably. Like there's a lot of dimension to it. Doing that with a 2D profile just won't really work. We already have our base tubing done, right? So it means we can look at it, we can see how everything's flowing. We have the clay work done, which is like our target design, but we're not clay modelers. We're not spending months on that, that clay to make it absolutely perfect because everything you make on that clay model gets scaled up times six. So one millimeter becomes six millimeters. A quarter inch becomes an inch and a half. So there's a lot in play there of just little minute details that are just six scales is too small for it and it's just not worth our time. So we do a lot of wire forming on this channel. We have a lot of experience with it. So now we're gonna use that skill to uh, finalize our shape. We're gonna lean into what we know. Yeah, exactly. And if you're saying that we're doing it wrong, well, you're wrong because we already know what we're doing. I have bad news for my Kenyan friends. Oh no. I cannot continue to represent. I don't know if I got up against something sharp the other day, um, but I just sat down at my desk and noticed that it felt really loose. Hmm. It's hanging on by a thread, literally. Just trying to vis visualize the plane from the front corner at the top to the bottom and see if it matches up with our model. Oh wait, this will make you happy. I'm just gonna move it around a whole bunch because I know you like- I, I like when you pick that up. Yeah, I know you, I know you do. Not really getting risky with it. Yeah. I'm not sure I don't like it, but I feel like it curves in a little bit more than the model, but- Okay. But I'm not sure that I don't we like can it fix either. That. I think that, I think, like we were saying, I think this is a little steeper on the wire form than the model, both here and, and, this, and here at the corner. Um, and I feel like that leans a little bit more into the Miura. And that's one aspect where I kind of like the GT40 was that it was a little, a little more vertical in, yeah. on this part right here. Yeah. 
So you're thinking, what we should, I think what we should do is just extend the bottom out. Yeah. So we have our 3D printed lens here, lens, and um, I want to kind of float it in the nose of Jigsaw so it's in the right place. And there's nowhere to mount it, obviously, and I can't hang it off the wire because it'll kind of flex around. But the idea is we have tons of GoPro mounts because we're a YouTube channel. Um, and I have even 3D printed ones like this, and this is 3D printed. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt these together so I have a GoPro mount like this is a GoPro. And then I can use any kind of arms we want and clamp it to the body. Use our big brain moves here and uh, we should be able to get it in place. Some shots are going on. So this can go like that, right? Probably, yeah, somewhere about there. So these are the wheels and tires that we used on the front of the slant nose when we were mocking it up. Proof of that is all these nice slices in there from, from our fenders Don't worry about as that. we were working on clearance. Um, but it's proof that we will have a car that handles and performs very well with this offset. And looking at it, it feel, fills the wheel wells out. We've got a nice wide presence to the car, which is exactly what we're after. And we can even go back a little bit maybe if we want to add to that clearance there to get, like like I said, get that um, 1960s feel where, where it doesn't fill out the wheel well completely. But I'm really happy with, uh, with everything right now. That's good. Yeah, now that this is wired up and we got our headlight floating in there, you know, you know what this reminds me of? What? So I was standing back there looking at it and it's the headlamp and the tires I think that add to it. Back in the good old days, back in the good old days, don't, don't put that in. The, uh, the Justice League cartoon from back in the day mm -hmm. when Wonder Woman was flying her invisible jet and they had those little white outlines of the jet and she's just sitting in there. Like yeah. this just reminds me of the invisible jet right now. <laughs> so now that the front end is roughly done in wire, there's still a couple more things we need to do with it. Um, this area right here, there's a lot of like organic shape that needs to go on to make going around the headlight work, especially with the pop-up, pop-down feature and whatnot. Um, so we need to finish the wiring for that. We also need to then take all this data and turn it into aluminum tubing that's going to actually be part of our Super Logera style uh, front clamshell. And then once all that's done, we can get that fully mounted to the car and then it's time to skin it with aluminum. Why don't we just make it out of fiberglass? Because that's not what we do here. Mm -hmm. 